This video is part of our Watts series on static equilibrium and covers the key concepts of stability and determinacy in beams. To access the full tutorial, visit the website linked in the video description. So far, we've talked about support reactions and how to draw a free body diagram. Now, let's take the next step, using equilibrium equations to solve for those unknown reaction forces. These equations are what allow us to convert the unknowns on the free body diagram into known forces. In two-dimensional problems, we have three independent equations of static equilibrium. Let's pause for a moment on that last one, the moment equilibrium equation. Even though we're dealing with forces in the xy plane, the moment equation we write is about the z-axis, the axis perpendicular to that plane. Any force that tends to rotate the body within the xy plane produces a moment about the z-axis. So when we write, the sum of the moments about the z-axis must be zero, we're saying the structure must not have any net tendency to rotate about the z-axis. In other words, we're making sure the system doesn't spin within its own plane. That's the rotational balance condition we enforce when analyzing two-dimensional structures. Because these three equations are independent, they can give us a unique solution, usually for the support reactions. But that only works if we've drawn the free body diagram carefully, with all the forces and distances clearly shown. So yes, putting effort into a clean, accurate diagram really matters. Since we have three equations, we can solve for up to three unknowns. Now here's something really important. When the number of unknowns equals the number of available equations, three and three, we say the system is statically determinate. That means, at least in theory, we can solve the equations to find the unknowns. I say in theory because there's a catch. The structure must also be stable in order for the equations to yield a unique solution. We'll see how this comes into play in the fourth example. What if the numbers don't match? Let's look at two other cases. If the number of unknowns is greater than three, we don't have enough equations to solve for all of them. In this situation, the structure is called statically indeterminate. To analyze such a structure, we'd need additional information, like how much the structure deforms or what materials it's made of. On the flip side, if we have fewer than three unknowns, we can't fully constrain the structure. That means the structure is unstable. It doesn't satisfy the conditions of static equilibrium. Let's go through a few examples to see how this works. Example one, pin and roller. We have a beam supported by a pin at one end and a roller at the other. The pin provides two reactions, one horizontal and one vertical. The roller provides one vertical reaction. That's a total of three unknowns. We also have three equations. Since the number of unknowns equals the number of equations and the equations are solvable, we call the beam a stable statically determinate system. Example two, pin and two rollers. Let's consider a beam supported by a pin at one end and two rollers at other locations along its length. The pin provides two reactions, one vertical and one horizontal. Each roller provides one vertical reaction force. That gives us a total of four unknowns, one horizontal and three vertical reaction forces. But we still only have three equilibrium equations. So we're dealing with four unknowns and only three equations. Since we are not able to solve for all the unknowns using these equations, we refer to this as a statically indeterminate system. Let's try another support configuration. What if the beam is supported only by two roller supports? Each roller provides just one vertical reaction, giving us a total of two unknowns. The three static equilibrium equations are, but since the free body diagram does not show any force in the x direction, the first equation is automatically satisfied. So we are left with two equations. Clearly, we can solve these equations for the two unknown forces. 
which could lead us to conclude that the beam is statically determinate. However, that would be the wrong conclusion. This beam is in fact unstable. Why? Because the beam is free to roll in the horizontal direction. It is not restrained in the x direction. This means that if the applied load has a horizontal component, then the first equilibrium equation cannot be satisfied. So even though we can solve the equilibrium equations for some loads, the structure can't remain in equilibrium under all loading conditions. And that leads us to an important conclusion. For a structure to be considered stable, the equilibrium equations must be satisfiable under all possible loading cases. Just because we can solve the equilibrium equations when the beam is subjected to a vertical load doesn't mean it is stable. To be labeled stable, the structure must resist all possible applied loads, not just a few. Now, let's look at a beam supported by a pin at one end and a roller on a vertical surface at the other. In this setup, the pin provides two reaction forces, one horizontal, AX, and one vertical, AY. The roller, being on a vertical wall, provides a horizontal reaction, BX. That gives us a total of three unknown reactions, and we still have three equilibrium equations. So the count checks out. Three equations, three unknowns. But watch what happens when we apply a vertical load of 10 kN located 5 meters away from point A. We can now write the equilibrium equations. And there's the problem. The moment equation says that 50 equals 0, which is clearly not true. This contradiction tells us something important. Even though we have the right number of equations and unknowns, the system is unstable. The equations do not produce a consistent, solvable set. This highlights a critical lesson. Matching the number of unknowns to the number of equations is not enough. We must also check whether the equilibrium equations are actually satisfiable under all possible loading scenarios. So, when evaluating stability, don't stop at counting. Always ask whether the system can truly resist any applied load. Let's take a step back and reflect on what these four examples have shown us. In example one, with a pin and a roller, we had three unknowns and three equations, and everything worked. The system was statically determinate and stable. That's the textbook case. In example two, we added more support, a pin and two rollers. That gave us four unknowns, but still only three equations. The structure was statically indeterminate, meaning we couldn't solve for all the reactions using statics alone. In example three, we had two rollers, just two unknowns, but three equations. At first glance, it looked like we the problem had a solution, but the structure turned out to be unstable because it couldn't resist forces in all directions. And that's a critical point. To be called stable, a structure must be able to resist all possible loads, not just a few special cases. And finally, in example four, we had a pin and a roller again, but they were placed in a way that made the system geometrically flawed. Even though we had three equations and three unknowns, the moment equation couldn't be satisfied. That's another form of instability. One where the math fails because the structure lacks proper restraint or geometric coherence. So what's the big picture? Counting equations and unknowns is a great first check. It tells you whether a solution might be possible. But don't stop there. Always ask, can the structure resist all possible loads? Do the equations actually have a consistent, solvable solution? Does the support configuration ensure both determinacy and stability?